Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. You may know already that you can go into the header or footer of a worksheet and insert a code to display its path and file name and have an update if the worksheet gets moved or renamed. You do know that, right? But what if you want to put that info on the worksheet itself? Or what if you want to display other information about cells, like what row or column a cell is on, or what type of data a cell contains? This is where we use a little known but very useful function called cell. The cell function doesn't calculate or modify data, it's for reading metadata about your worksheets. And like any other function, you can nest it inside other functions to do useful things. So let's take a look and see how it works. Let's look at the function syntax first. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We say equal cell, and there's two arguments. The first argument is required. What is the info type? And then the second argument, the cell reference, that's optional. We'll talk about what that is. What are the possible info types? Well, there's a whole bunch of these. So, for example, you could find the address, that is the row and column of a cell. Maybe you want to find just the column or just the row. Maybe you want to find the format. Maybe you want to know, are there parentheses in a formula in a particular cell? So there's 11 of these info types. It's way too much to explain each one in detail in this video. What you can do is go directly to Microsoft's website to get detailed explanations of each one. Let me take you through this page. So here's info type and the reference that we talked about. Here are all the different info types, like what column is the particular cell in? What format is it? I'll show you more about format in a second. Does it have parentheses? Is it protected? And so on. So as far as format goes here, these are format codes. So this will tell you, oh, this, the cell is a dollar format or it's a number format and so on. Now, this web page has, you can see, a very long web address, very long URL. I don't expect you to remember that or write it down. So what I did for you is I created this shortened URL that you see on your screen. So if you go to that URL, that will bring you to this page on Microsoft's website. Let's take a look at a few examples. So I could say, for example, equal cell file name. That's the info type. You notice this is in quotes. Whenever you have text in a formula, the text has to be in quotation marks. Otherwise, Excel won't know what to do with it. Another example might say equal cell and the, and the info type is type. And we're looking at cell A5. Well, what does this all mean? If you use only the info type and you omit the cell reference, the function's result will be for the cell itself that contains the function. So if you put this function into cell G10, for example, and you don't specify a different reference, it will give you info on cell G10. But if you want to put the function in G10, but you want to get the info about cell A5, then the second argument of the function should be A5. Notice the cell reference is not in quotation marks. Let's go to the Excel worksheet. So here's a pretty typical Excel sheet. Let me scroll down a little bit. I want to find out what the format is of some cells. I'll just go there to cell B22, and I'm going to say equals cell. And in quotation marks, I'm going to say format. And I want the format not of this cell that I'm typing in, but I want the format of cell B20. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you could read this better. And you get this kind of cryptic result, C0. I'll just go back up there so you see there's the formula. It says C0. C0 means it's currency. The C means currency. And 0 means there are zero decimal places. Let's say I want to find out the file name. I'll go down in there, and I'm going to say equals cell. And I want the file name. Now, I can, rather than typing it in, I could just double click it there. 
Now for file name, it doesn't matter which cell I'm referring to. So I could just enter that. And you see, it gives us this long result and I'm running Windows on my MacBook. So that's why it's telling me that this file is on my Mac, on my desktop, the name of the file is cell function.xlsx and the worksheet you could see is called examples and that's what it's outputting there. Now, what if I just want the file name and not the path or the worksheet name? Here's where I'll show you an example of using the cell function along with another function, actually another couple of functions, because I'm going to go and use the text before and text after functions to grab just the file name and remove everything else. Again, let's look at some syntax before we do anything. So the syntax of the text before and text after functions is we say either text before or text after either way. And also two arguments, one required argument, what's the delimiter? And the second argument is what is the instance number? I'm going to do this in two steps so you can better see how it works. The text after function will return the text that comes after a character I specify. The file name starts after the opening square bracket, so I'll use that. Let's go back to Excel. I'm going to go and edit this. So I'm going to take that cell function and I'm going to nest it inside the text after function. So you can see by the syntax, what we saw a moment ago in the text after function, the first argument is what is the text we're feeding it. So this entire cell function, that's going to be that argument. So I'm going to click after the closing parenthesis, comma, and now what's the delimiter? Well, the delimiter I'm looking for is the left square bracket. So in quotes, I'm going to type a left square bracket and I want to get the last one just in case there's more than one. So comma and I say minus one. And now I'm going to close the parenthesis of the text after function. And you see, this is a good start, but now we need to remove the closing bracket and the sheet name. Now, what I'm about to do might look strange, but I'm going to nest the text after function inside the text before function. That way I can also remove the characters after the ending bracket. So let's double click here so we can edit that. So there's the cell function nested inside text after. Now I'm going to take text after and nest it inside text before. So I got equals text before that's opening parenthesis. So the text before, just like the text after function, the first argument is what's the text. So the text argument of text before is going to be the entire text after and the cell functions, those two functions nested together. So you see, I've got that minus one and the closing parenthesis, that's the end of it. So now what I'm going to do comma, and now I specify the other bracket in quotes. That's the closing bracket in quotes. And now I'm going to close the outer parenthesis belonging to the text before function. So this is going to remove the bracket and the sheet name after it. There we go. And we're left with just the file name. Now I like this technique because it'll work no matter how many spaces are in the file name. There are other ways to do what I just did using a combination of like the find and the mid functions and all that. And it just gets to be a mess. It's kind of complicated. And those are older ways of doing it. The text before and text after functions are relatively new. Uh, and you can see it's uh, pretty straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as and save this file under a new name. So I'm going to go to the file menu. I'm going to do save as, and I'm going to leave it on my desktop. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to call this file cell function with formulas. So that's the new name save. And you notice the file name hasn't changed. And that's because the worksheet needs to recalculate for that to happen. Now, almost anything will cause the worksheet to recalculate like entering something in a cell, deleting something, or you could even press F9 or a function F9. So for example, I can click in there and just, you know, if I type some gibberish and enter it, that recalculates. Or if I 
go and delete some gibberish there that will recalculate. And you see the very first thing that I did, it recalculated and it told us what is the new file name. There are other pieces of info I wish the cell function would get, like the names of worksheets or info on tables and other objects. Though all of that is available with Visual Basic. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.